Story number one. The cause and effect of Donald Trump. <sighs> Very touchy topic because uh, there's two sides of the coin when it comes to this administration and it comes to the styles of, uh, of being a president. The thing that I can say with the story number one, the reason why it crept into the top eight this week is interesting is because um, being uh, studying business and going to school for it, and I almost, uh, almost got to the level of a bachelor's degree, but I did get a, um, it's a regular degree in business. Uh, I found out that everything has to be accounted for. And I found out there's that there's a lot of different types of business owners, businessmen, uh, business, just a lot of people, types of the way people that do business. I did not go to school for politics or for politics or political science. I went to school for business, but uh, watching um, this administration and, and and being still being 37, uh, just I mean I I've, I've paid my dues, served the country, did my time, but uh, uh, I I was a big ethics. I I really liked the ethics books when I was reading in business. And uh, what I noticed about business is uh, sometimes uh, profit is good, but the mission statement is is amazing. It's a, the mission statement. And I think studying, going through these eight stories this week and uh, just re reading and reading and, and trying to find some common ground, as usual, what I, what I tr choose to do in the media and try to stay in the middle is uh, the, the, try to figure out the mission statement for the United States of America and only the only pure documents that this country has that can state the founding of anything you you know you have founders in business you have founders is the mission statement some business owners they they go into the business for profit and when they can't make money they they the doors close some of them choose not to invest their own money and then sometimes they just choose to just uh, some some business owners go on other get merged with other companies and some people. But the thing is, is once the founder is gone, the business always takes a different turn. You know, sometimes uh, you have family businesses, a family may uh, turn the business over to their children. But the fact is, is, is how the business develops from its mission statement is the core of every business plan. You know, you have a business plan, you submit it to the bank. And the scary part is, is that the business sometimes take, takes turns, takes courses. But the thing is that everybody who comes inside of the business, they never, they never actually read the policies, read the mission statement, read the design. And sometimes they may get their hands smacked and sometimes they may, they may not understand why it is the way it is. And in every business, there's a culture, there's a, there's a, there's a, a feeling of, of how the business is run. I have my own business. It started from a t-shirt. But the thing is, is that when you're dealing with this business of government and governing as the president of the, 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 the business of the United States, the corporation, it, it can get difficult. And there's a cause and effect with this Trump administration. And, uh, and there's a lot of people uh, concerned about not only the the mission statement of not only the Constitution, but of the country's founding. And it, there's some shady things that, uh, that I've been able to find out about not only this country's past, but people who have uh, ap approached not only just the presidential pulpit, but a lot of pulpits in America. And they have, they have some, they've, they've died for the mission statement, but they've had some shady dealings in their life. And it's, it's amazing uh, going into story number one is the fact that you see headlines surfacing about tariffs and raising the price of some Americans' best known companies uh, being put out of business because of government policies. It's scary. And you see some of the dealings with foreign policy, foreign leaders, and the fact that Trump has allowed uh, tech, U, uh, high tech U.S. bomb parts to be built in Saudi Arabia. If you do not remember uh, the Saddam regime when they when Saudi Arabia was inv was invaded, this was government policies that was voted for by the people of the United States. And you're seeing the business of government constantly engaging in wars that uh, senseless wars that really uh, 
kind of put us in a sense of solitude. But the question is, is when you look at the business statement of the United States, did it involve a lot? Well, did it involve what we see and what we understand to be the view of America today? Some people don't look at this country in a positive standpoint. It is creating a lot of confusion. But the fact is, is that if you read the 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 the, not only the text of the Constitution, you can tell that there was a moral obligation and a moral responsibility that somehow gave these men at the particular founding of this nation some type of, of, of motivation to write the, the will of the Constitution the way it is of this nation. And it's, if you, it's at, it's, I can honestly say that it is in danger more and more as we go throughout the weeks and as we go throughout the, the, just the, the ideas of intellect, new, new ideas surfacing. It's basically saying like if I build an electric phone, 10, 10 other people can build, build that phone much better than I can, but the fact is, is that my idea was the electric phone. This can go from every civilization, just like they, there's an idea of God. Everybody just has this new idea of God. The, the, but the fundamentals is that if there's a God, there's just a God. You come up with all these ideas of gods and all these, but the thing is that something is designing this universe. And this is what I'm saying about story number one is that everything has a cause and effect. And they're looking at this president's cause and effect as either being positive or negative, but there's two sides of the coins. Some people say this president is being a po is, is creating a negative vibe within the atmosphere of this country, and he's not living by the the moral principles of the Constitution. We will find out in the next uh, year and a half for some change in 2020 if uh, if the vote once the voters go to the polls and see if uh, Trump will be reelected for two terms at 70 something years old, which is unbelievable, and uh, the fact that the man has done a lot of things in the business arena shady and unshady is 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 a very that itself is a story but the fact is is that if it, if it was shady to the point to where it is demoralizing the value of not only just the u.s dollar but the u.s people then we have a problem they're talking about how tax cuts his tax cuts contributed to God, to job growth and a better economy, but some people have said we're headed down a different path now because we don't know how long these tax cuts are going to last with now the tariffs on threats with Mexico and, and the trade wars with China. Some people think it's necessary. Some people don't. This is serious talk here because of the fact that people could be losing food on the table and people could be losing money. If you do not know, the minority community is already suffering from policies not only just Democrats coming in with cotton candy everywhere, but the fact is that people have to get to work. This is serious business. You don't understand when these tech, when these text gurus come in, these machines are replacing people. That person goes somewhere, uh, just ter just com committing complete terrorism on his own people. You see, you see, oh, you see this every day happening in the news where people go off, they lose a job. Next thing you know, they're pop, they're popping mollies, and, and it's all it's all over the place. But the fact is, what we have to look at is, is this president's policies going to better the people in this country? Or is his policies bettering the people? Like when we look at some of the, 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 the decisions that he's making and the fact that you look locally, the local economy, GM, gone, Northside Hospital, gone. These are local jobs. When people start stop losing, start losing jobs and they start losing money, then all of a sudden they all of a sudden understand the value of voting. This is serious stuff. You look across the globe, people, people who don't have money are trying to get in this country. So this president's legacy is on the line, but there's a cause and effect to everything this man tweets, every move he makes, just like it was in the Obama administration. This is serious business. When you're talking about government, the government is serious business. I served. People die at the hand of their just, just, just simple stuff. That's happening. You can see it in the news. You see it happening all over. But as the mediator, I have to find some common ground. It is my supreme duty to stay in the middle. But there's been some shocking things. You look at the tweets. You look at the fact that people are being losing their jobs. For There was a teacher who was fired for asking Trump to deport undocumented students. Folks, if you don't if, if you don't know too much history on on the war, world wars about Hitler and about the the process of power, the process of assuming a powerful position, 
when there's a lot of people who lose their life on that process and then the fact that your ideology when you say, when you speak that you want to nationalize a country or make it not only just a, a, a independent nation but you don't it, when you sit in solitude it's very it's very scary and the people who who understand history they see they see signs that this is the same thing that happened during that regime when you put all your faith in one central power i'm not saying that this has happened in this administration but i'm listening to other talking points i'm engaging in dialogue i'm listening to what people are saying and this is what people are afraid of it's not that the that the man is has not been voted in it's the fact that power in the hands of too many or just one group of people is scary and it can it can cost a lot of people's lives this is serious stuff if you don't if you thought that slavery was bad 400 years and what it's done to african americans the, the people well i'm mixed i got all types of blood in me indians uh which is probably most Americans, but I've got mainly, I'm predominantly African American, but it's, it's, it's demoralized. The community is killed it. Slavery has, even when they bombed uh, what they call black wall street, it's, it's, it, it, it destroyed the next generation because the, the economy within African American communities has never been the same. It's never, they've never been, have any, had any type of establishment. They've always had to, uh, to depend on the, the, uh, the, the currency of the, of the enslaver is scary, but this is real. So that's what I'm saying. When you have, when you go, when you have to go to Washington for every, for all of the citizens, and then you have the fact that there's a, a lot of people trying to get to the border. This is, this position is, is an, is an amazing position, the presidency. But the thing is, is there's a cause and effect of this administration. I try to be as modest as possible with my talk, but there's some serious stuff happening inside of the news that people that is gaining the attention and is waking up a lot of people. And, and, and the, the scary part is, is that U.S. automakers are, are not only suffering from the uh, tariffs, but a lot of company. I went to, uh, I sell ink. I went to the uh, guy the, one of the suppliers, he said, well, we have to go up 25% because of the tariffs. There's a lot of money. People have been getting, just looking for some sign of hope, some sign of leadership. But the thing is, is that, is this worth it? Is is this worth it at this particular time in, in, in the present day and in, the, in this country's history? Is it time to be brutal and be selfish? That's the question we have to ask ourselves with this administration. Is it time to think all business, no personal? Is it time to cut off the people who have, the people who are poor, who really don't have much? Is it time to be this brutal? Is it time? This is the scariest part about this administration is, is it time? I'm not saying that, th that Trump is a bad person. I don't know him personally, but the thing is, is that as a president, as a bit, as a former businessman, but as the as the leader of this governing body, we have to ask ourselves: Is that is this going to be better for the future of the next generation? And it is getting very scary. People are making some very scary talking points. I'm seeing uh, people divided. I'm seeing uh, people lo losing friends over defending policies from the past administration to this administration, and the fact that there were, there's even truckers talking about losing their per diem if per diem is a uh, is extra extra money that you receive for lunch and gas and things like that. So people are losing money, and uh, it's it's it, we're we're headed in a in a very different direction. That's story number one, cause and effect of the Trump administration, the future of the American presidency in this country is at stake. If you want to contribute anyway, you're on the media. It'll be Brian West, where it's my supreme duty, man. I, the talk and the talk of the town is all about Trump and his policies, and I, I mean. It's amazing. It's amazing. But if you want to contribute, if you want to help me out, people are, I mean, there's, they are, there are talking points about slavery, reparation, minorities, the majority, there are talking points all over the place. And it is a jungle out there, but I have to, I do my best to navigate and, and talk as, as modest as possible. But I'm telling you this, debates are heating up in 2020 may be not only just a, a different political atmosphere, but uh, it, it will probably be uh, 
it will probably define the legacy of the foundings of this nation. And it's just getting very scary. So if you want to help me out, I have to visit www.method8.com, the number eight, inc.com, method8.com. You're the media. It will be Brian Westward. It's my duty every Sunday to give you the top eight headlines and developing news stories. I'm shooting all air balls. I'm just in the air because that's all I, that's, that's all that you're, you're hearing in this show is I'm, I'm, I'm not making any shots. I'm just shooting air. I'm shooting vocal cords, but I'm still in the game. And that's what's amazing about being on the radio is that you can you 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 hit the airwaves and and there's there's no there's no fancy moves it's just you and, the, and an audience and that's the scary part about it so if you want to be a part of it if you want to help me out in any way all you have to do is visit www.method the number eight inc.com method com, where you can buy something click on something watch something have no fear fellow citizens